today? Today I'm going to say Lily today. Hello. Well, mommy, does he have lunch? I got my ball. And rock. We're just heading out to grab some lunch at the little cafe on the edge of the village. And there's a little to girl there. Lily. Yeah, there's a little girl there called Lily that Story likes to play with. She's my favourite girl. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Leaf boats. You want to make a leaf boat? No, I really like to make a one. Okay, you can With a stick and uh, some leaves. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. We can try and make one through the puddles. Oh. Right, let's see if it's open. Oh. Do you think the cafe's open, Stormy? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's open. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, go see if you can find Lily. Lily, Story's helping out in the kitchen while we wait. <laughs> there you go. Go play. The tide is right in. We did think to walk here along the beach because the resort is just around the corner here. But we were quite hungry, so we decided to just get here quick <laughs> and bring the tuk-tuk. I'm hoping it doesn't rain though, because there's no shelter at this cafe. Yeah. Story is suitably occupied over there. Recently, we've been talking a lot about how your environment shapes you and how the people you surround yourself with kind of determine how you turn out right like for example me talking the other day about growing my hair out i would never do that if i wasn't surrounded by people with long hair because i can see that it's part of the environment here yeah it's less resistance which means it's easier for me to experiment with those kind of things and it's the same with like i don't think we would ever have gone vegan had we not been living in thailand where certain conditions made us want to stop eating meat yeah and now story growing up by the sea, wanting to take swimming lessons and you know, hanging out with people that are more active and physically yeah. fit and, and the doing whole, things. The surfing as well, like Story would never have an opportunity to go surfing if we still lived where we did in England, mm. say. Yeah, or it would be much more difficult to become interested in it because of the weather, how cold yeah. it is, and the distance to the sea. Yeah, even in Portugal, there was a big surfing community where we lived in Portugal unless you were already like a really great like surfer and you yeah. wanted to go and hit those big massive Portuguese waves to go and learn to surf in Portugal it never really it didn't, entered yeah, our heads it didn't it? appeal as much yeah it's the on-ramp isn't it yeah. for, a, for a beginner surfing in Portugal was much harder yeah. because you had to brave the cold waves of the wet suit and <laughs> yeah, you the, had to really yeah. be wanting it it was a more of an extreme thing whereas here it feels more like a leisurely thing yeah. so the beginners on ramp means that I'm much more likely to do my surfing here yeah. and then when you get really good at it or you get really excited about it Portugal would be amazing for that. We would be very, very different people and so would Story if we were to grow up in a very cold country versus somewhere like this. This island has so much appeal right now with the things that we think would be suitable for a child and just to be outdoors a lot more. Yeah. Also being here, we've opened up a whole new door into ocean conservation and those kind of topics with Story and why it's good to be plastic free and maybe zero waste and be more eco-friendly and things like that because you can physically see the knock-on effect of using plastic when you live this close to the beach and it gets washed up every morning you see new plastic bottles on the sand and you're like well how did they get there and it's a great way to explain to story like those kind of issues because it doesn't matter how much you do a beach cleanup if corporations and companies are still producing wads and wads of plastic it is eventually going to end up on the shores again yeah. isn't it yeah and i think being on the on this island in particular it is very much into no plastic there's a lot of eco shops pretty much every cafe that we've been to will give you a metal or a bamboo straw mm, or even a coconut straw yeah, you know, like yeah. Wrapped, leaf wrapped up or yeah a banana sort of, leaf yeah that's it the people here really do want to keep it beautiful mm. there's russell 
happening back to Makulai. We actually got a message from Russell's girlfriend Mila and she's back in Denmark safe and sound but she says she misses the island already so <laughs> when you leave a place like this I definitely can feel yeah. how much you would miss it. Yeah I think that would have been us as well if we'd have powered through to get back to the UK for some reason we would definitely be feeling that itch to go and the wanderlust again and yeah so I'm I'm glad that we stayed put and continued with our plans to move here more permanently. Over the years we've like kind of made a lot of online friends that travel the world and they have been locked down in all different kinds of countries <laughs> and a lot of people have said that I've got stuck in the West that they wish they were out here or they wish they were somewhere a bit more like this and so I'm very aware of that I'm quite I'm very grateful for that that it happens in that way and that we made the choice to stay here and not ride this out back in England yeah it just wasn't right for us you know we will be moving house in just a couple of weeks now yeah and already I'm getting that feeling like oh have we done enough here like <laughs> you know we're yeah. not even leaving the island but I've got that feeling you know when you're about to leave a holiday or you're about to go somewhere else and you feel like oh but maybe I should have gone back to this place and did mm. I take enough pictures did I do enough of this did I do you know do you know what I mean yeah no I definitely <laughs> know yeah it happens all the time yeah. I mean sometimes you can go to a place and you can pack too much in too quickly yeah and sometimes you can go somewhere and stay so long that you don't do enough because yeah. you get too comfortable yeah and everything and starts to be normal yeah. so then you're like well I'm not gonna bother to take a picture of that because I'll see it again tomorrow or... yeah or I'll wait for the weather to get better yeah. and then maybe it never does or you just forget the camera yeah so then yes we do remind ourselves this is a fairly small island and also there's a lot to discover here that we still haven't even touched yet yeah. like there's waterfalls on the west coast we haven't even been to the west coast yet yeah all of our travels have been done on the on the east yeah. haven't they and there's other islands we've never seen plenty to do here and we can always work our way back round to <laughs> general luna and yeah. this area in yeah. the future so car talk Someone asked a question the other day about whether or not we're actually going to get a car or if we're just going to continue renting tuk-tuks. We are, but the car that we're looking at is in Cebu, isn't mm, it? Yeah. And Cebu is actually still under ECQ and we are not able to get anything from there at the moment. Mm, even the people living there are struggling to get around. Yes. They're struggling to sort out paperwork and registrations and whatnot. Mm. However some very generous person has said that we can borrow their car for the month of August. Yes. So we are going to be doing that in a couple of days. Yeah, we will be handing back the tuk-tuk once again. Yeah. Kind of end of our lockdown vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, taking on a car for the month, which is actually here on the island. Yeah. So hopefully by the time we finish borrowing this vehicle, we would have our own one. If you've been watching our weekend vlogs on Patreon, you would have seen the sneak preview of the vehicle we're gonna get, <laughs> or that we really want to get. Yeah. And let's just say that it is extremely unique. Apparently there's only one of them in the Philippines and we cannot wait to get it. <laughs> if we can get it. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, but all the whole travel restrictions are just making everything very... Slow. Slow, yeah, because ideally we would have gone over there to see it and test drive it and all that kind of stuff but yeah. we just physically can't. Luckily the person that is selling the vehicle is actually a mechanic themselves they've got a full-blown body shop and what we're doing is we're just sharing photos and videos of the project and we may have somebody we know over on the island go and test drive it just as a unbiased second opinion yeah. and then we'll just get it posted to Surigao yeah. on a stick it on a boat yeah, that, that would way. be the best option because yeah. it would mean that we don't have to actually leave the island and travel anywhere and the car can just come to us yeah. hopefully because the it's risky if one of us takes a boat over to Cebu and then the rules change and then I get stuck in Cebu and then yeah. you're stuck here in Chargao no yeah. car no tuk-tuk yeah that would be horrible, horrible. wouldn't it yeah. <laughs> so we don't want that to happen exactly and neither of us feel any inclination to want to leave the island at the moment either we don't want to go anywhere yeah, there's a lot to see and do yeah. here and we just want to start kind of solidifying our life here in our position yeah. and so if we can have the vehicle delivered here all registered and in our name and whatnot yeah perfect <laughs> Let's see how it goes. The month of August is going to be a busy one. Yes. No, better me. Better me. I'm the one to go. I, I, I think I'm finished with this. I think so. I was just so planning to make, make some 
<laughs> she is, isn't she? Okay. So the story just actually crossed over the road with her friend Lily and she's playing in the little treehouse over there. We are trying to give her as much freedom as we can. We want to have a little bit of independence from us. We obviously spend a lot of time together as a family, but it is definitely very good for her to have her own little moments where she can be in control of her decisions. I can see she was just over there with Lily and her mum, just cooking some vegetables in the kitchen, which is really cool. She's actually cooking the dinner that we're gonna eat. So. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> I'm getting quite hungry, yeah. and Story is providing my meal for me, so that's pretty good. Excellent. Oh, Look wow. at that. Nice, thank you very much. Could you put it on the table for me, please? Thank you very much. Are you girls going to have some too? I'm super tasty. They are super tasty, aren't they? Thank you. These are the Shaka Bra chips. Mm. Home made from scratch. It's going to take a bit of time to come out, but they're so worth it. Mm -hmm. Another good old island favourite of ours. The coconut burger. So amazing. What a discovery. Who knew you could make burgers out of coconuts, eh? <laughs> you can do everything with that coconut, can't you? It's really tasty as well, and the salsa inside. Mango, tomato. It's really nice. Onion. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> look, look. This one. What happens? Lily made this. Yeah, it's pretty. No, isn't now it? I could be a, a, a. Now I could be a real human. <laughs> you are a real human. The stormy weather finally came to us. Story is just about to eat her dinner and I'm helping Sasha with her rainbow project and I've just remembered why I hate hot glue guns so much. I stopped using these things years ago when I've been doing projects but today the project requires one and it is so difficult to get it neat. I've already burnt my fingers about three times <laughs> but we've come up with a technique, we've turned the rainbow onto its back and we're going to do like a kind of messy but strong glue on the rear and then we're going to flip it over and hopefully it will look beautiful on the other side. I think we might be done. So on the back side here it's ugly as hell, lots of glue lines but trying to make it strong. If you flip it over it's much neater and that's the rainbow project. Now we just need to get a hook on there and when Story gets to her new room she can hang it up herself. <laughs> what do you think of mummy's rainbow project? Are you looking forward to putting it in your room? Mm. You're inspecting it? Mm. <laughs> so we've just got to put a hook on the back and then we'll be able to paint it on the wall. Yes. Actually, I might paint the puffy bits at the end. They need yes. to be untangled so they're like puffy, yes. cloudy type things. So I might brush them with some white paint. Yeah, do some dry brushing. Yeah, when the rainbow comes to life. Is that the song? <laughs> Right, I have just put Story to bed and we're going to sit and do some shout outs. First of all, we're going to do a shout out that's coming from Maria Teresa and you are in Bacor Cavite. Hello. She would like to wish her daughters, Fiona Therese de Salle and Kate Nicole de Salle, a happy birthday. You guys are celebrating your birthdays on August the 1st and August the 5th. So happy birthday to both of you. Hope you have a lovely celebration. The next shout out is coming from Marites Capilli. And she is requesting a big happy birthday shout out to yeah. her son, Dion Bernabe. And you are turning 33 years old. Happy birthday to you. You guys are missing the island life and the beautiful beaches and where you can swim and not feel cold. <laughs> yes, I know that thing. Yes, we do. <laughs> now we are doing a belated happy birthday to Martel. And this is coming from your girlfriend, Belle. You're both originally from the Philippines, but now currently living in Vancouver in Canada. Happy birthday, Martel. Hope you had a lovely celebration. Hello and happy birthday to Chrissa. Hope you're having a lovely day or had a lovely day. <laughs> And the last shout out we're doing today is from Len Corsiga. And we are wishing your daughter Alicia a very happy 21st birthday. Big number. Yeah, I hope you're having a lovely day as well. Yeah, lots of love from your mum, your dad, and your brother, Jam. 
Oh, hello everybody and happy birthday Alicia. In your message you did hope that Story would be able to do the shout out for you but she's already fast asleep so I'm sorry about that. Thank you for the lovely message you sent to us. If you want to get a shout out request of your own, 8milesfromhome at gmail.com, send us an email with the subject as a shout out. Now these videos sometimes are filmed a few days in advance so it's difficult for us to get them on the day but we'll try. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed today's video and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.